everyone welcome back to my channel today i'll be talking about the mechanical properties of materials and looking at some terminologies that we use to describe a material's behavior it's very important that we understand materials behavior because we want to avoid breakage and premature rapture during the materials we use in service so scenarios like this we can try to avoid it if we understand how a material will behave okay so in this video i'll be talking about young's modulus which is also known as the modulus of elasticity or the tensile modulus this is different from the tensile strength and i will try to explain in the course of the video and um, the tensile strength is also known as the ultimate tensile strength in subsequent videos i'll also be talking about the shear modulus and Poisson's ratio so Young's modulus is a measure of stiffness. So if you subject a material to a load or to a force, the Young's modulus determines how rigid the material is. So how much force or how much pressure the material can take without uh, deforming. So which means that if you let, if you remove the force, the material should regain its original shape. So, for example, for iron, which has a Young's modulus of about 200 gigapascals, um, compared to rubber, which has a Young's modulus of one megapascal. So the bigger your Young's modulus, it means that you are more rigid. You are able to resist any deformation when you're subjected to a load, okay? And if you look at this table here, it's, this figure here is looking at the dif dis distinctions yeah between different materials like ceramics which have quite high stiffness um, metals and alloys are also quite high compared to the likes of wood and polymers and rubbers just a quick question do you think this rubber rubber band is much more elastic compared to steel so i'll give you a few seconds to think about that and give you an answer Okay, so I've given, <laughs> I've given about three seconds for you to think about it. So there's a bit of a misconception, especially because this is often called an elastic band, but rubber bands have much less elasticity compared to a material like steel. And that's because elasticity is a term used to de determine or define the resistance of a material to plastic deformation. And it's the normal stress or the pressure divi uh, divided by the strain. So if you the strain is the change in length compared to the original length. So if you have very little change in length with a very high stress, then which means that you have high elasticity. So unfortunately, the rubber band is not high, does not have high elasticity compared to steel. Okay, so next tensile strength. So in the beginning, we spoke about this area here, which is the elastic region. And remember, the elastic region is the area where the material does not change its shape. It regains its original shape when the stress or when the force is removed. When you increase the stress beyond the elastic limit, you will start moving to an area where we call the plastic zone. That's where plastic deformation occurs. And plastic deformation means that the parts does not return to its original shape after the force has been removed. So it determines, the tensile strength determines the maximum stress that a material can take um, before you start looking into rupture. So it's this value here, okay? There's typically three types of material behavior. You have the elastic region, you have the plastic, and then you have the permanent, permanent, you have the, the area we call necking, so which means that the part is about to rapture, okay? So if you keep on applying the load to the part, it would, it would move towards the necking region and then finally rapture at this point. Things such as modelin clay, for example, if you apply a force to it, it just goes straight into permanent deformation. You don't have any elasticity because when you press it, it just, it doesn't go back into its original shape when you let go. 
So tear cell tests are typically used to determine the mechanical properties of parts. This is an example of a stress strain kit as we've seen um, in the previous slides. But what I want you to note is this figure here at the bottom. Typically you would have a standard shape, what we usually call dog bones, and it will be mounted on two jaws of a tester and the parts or the specimen will be stretched. So you will start from this area where there's plastic deformation, sorry, there's elastic deformation, which means that if you stop the test, the material will just, the parts of the specimen will just go back to its original shape. However, if you continue to apply the load on the material, it would start to deform plastically. So you are then in this region and there will be an automated tensile strength or the UTS where the material would, that's where the material, that's the maximum force the material can take. Um, and then once you go beyond the automated tensile strength, then you start to have necking, which is like you can see here, there's a reduction in the area of the material and you know that you're going to have fracture at this point. So if you want to find the modulus of elasticity, you have to look within the elastic region where you have a straight line. And to calculate that, it's a stress of a strain. So you can draw a horizontal line from this vertical stress axis to the curve. And where it touches the curve, you draw that line down to the strain axis and then just divide this figure here, 400 or whichever value you take within the, the elastic region divided by the strain value. And note here is showing strain as meter per meter, which is just that cancels out really. So the unit for modul modulus of elasticity is Pascal. So if you divide the stress by the strain, it will give you the modulus of elasticity. Now to find the yield strength, uh, which is where you we are transitioning to plastic, the plastic region. Typically, the yield strength is calculated at 0.2% strain. That's because you don't always know the distinct point where uh, a material changes from its elastic properties to its plastic properties. So what you would do is that you would find 0.2%, um, which is 0.2 over divided by 100, and that would, you would draw the line from that point, the 0.2% um, point on the strain curve, and make sure that line is parallel to this elastic line, okay? And once you draw that line, just draw it until it crosses the curve. So wherever it crosses the curve, you project that to the stress axis, and that would be your yield strength. The ultimate tensile strength is the maximum, so you would project that to that end and to get your UTS. Um, the break-in strength as well, you will project it this way from, because this is where fracture occurs, you will project it to that axis. So I hope that was, this video has been useful to you and you have learned about uh, the difference between the Young's modulus, which is a measure of elasticity, um, and elasticity is different from extension or ductility. Elasticity is a measure of a material's ability to resist deformation. And also we use tensile, st tensile tests to try and determine the, uh, the different properties of a material. So thank you very much. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you.